This is the show that explores the fascinating secret life of the world around us. Revealing surprising facts guaranteed to make you say, I didn't know that. Meet Richard Ambrose and Johnny Phillips. Two industrial scientists who don't mind getting their hands dirty when it comes to establishing the facts. Join them on their mission to explore the extraordinary behind the ordinary. Villain. Ever since the days when you had to have someone running in front of them waving a red flag, cars have been on the receiving end of a lot of anger and criticism. But more recently, manufacturers have been putting a lot of effort into making cars more environmentally friendly, more recyclable and less polluting. We're going to take a look at the current crop of so-called greener vehicles and see how they stack up. First up is this, the G-Wiz. It's an electric car, so when the car's running, it produces zero emissions, and that means zero pollution. Electric cars have been around for decades, but as battery technology has improved, so has their efficiency. The really great thing about this car is it's kind on your wallet. You don't pay road tax and one charge overnight, and it's great for a run around town the next day. On the downside, much of the electricity they use still comes from burning fossil fuels. But overall, they do have a smaller carbon footprint than their petrol equivalents. The hybrid car has been with us for a while now, and Honda in particular have invested a lot in systems that combine the best of petrol and electric engines. This car has two engines, a petrol one, which runs on unleaded fuel, and an electric one, powered by batteries. These two engines work together to reduce emissions. This might look like an old Mercedes diesel, and that's because it is an old Mercedes diesel. But rather than using conventional fuel, we'll be testing its performance using bog-standard vegetable oil. This isn't that surprising because the first ever diesel engine, invented by Dr. Diesel, was designed to run on peanut oil, not just the stuff you find at the pumps. Now, any family diesel can run on vegetable oil, but you might need a modification. It'd be worth checking. However, be warned. As soon as you put vegetable oil into your tank, it becomes classified as a motor fuel. And for every litre you burn, you're supposed to send off 27.1 pence to the tax man. A more government-friendly biofuel, i.e. one that they can tax at the pump, is bioethanol, which can be used in this brand new Saab. Bioethanol is produced from fermenting sugars in a wide variety of crops and, as such, is renewable and potentially carbon neutral. But which of these cars is your best bet? Well, we're going to try and find out by putting them through their paces with a couple of tests. The first trial is a 400-metre dash straight down this track here to see how they perform on a sprint start. Now, we've got four cars and there's only two of us, so we've invited our naughty twin brothers along. Come on, lads, and behave yourselves. Remember, yeah, you're on television. Yeah, yeah. As if we would. He's always telling me what to do. I can't stand it. I really can't. We're keen to test the car's performance, even though drag racing isn't the most eco-friendly way of driving. I'm really looking forward to this. I love beating Johnny. He hates it. Come on. The bioethanol Saab with its 2.3 litre engine streaks away. Now they are herring off. And the ancient Merc puts up a good show until the hybrid's petrol engine kicks in. Oh, come on! The bioethanol on the hybrid has flown away. As for the electric car, it's not going to be frightening Ferraris anytime soon. But this result was pretty much as expected, because electric car engines generally don't produce that much power. The Mercedes ran a bit quicker on vegetable oil, as it's cleaner than diesel, but it's still a sluggish old thing. By using both engines at the same time, the hybrid is less reliant on its petrol engine and so uses less fuel and therefore produces less emissions. Basically, it's more green than go. So, for the boy or girl racer looking for an alternatively powered vehicle, high-octane bioethanol is the way to go. So that was conclusive. 
it doesn't exactly whiz. Now the second trial is endurance. We're going to test these cars to see how far they'll travel at constant speed with just one pound's worth of fuel. I've been charging this now, it's fully charged, and even on a green tariff, I get change. Although the hybrid car has a big battery to assist it, it still runs on unleaded petrol. So I got just a smidge over a litre of fuel for my pound. For the veggie diesel, our pound also buys just over a litre of oil. Bioethanol is slightly cheaper than unleaded, but only slightly, so once again we get just over a litre to play with. In this test, we're looking for stamina over speed, so they all set off at a steady 50 kilometres per hour. Now the endurance test is perfect for this car. We'll just wear these guys down and I think we're going to win. For the first 15 minutes it's evenly matched, but then... I think, yeah, it's starting to feel a bit odd. Here we go. Ah, the Saab looks in trouble. The bioethanol Saab is the first to bite the dust. Its large, powerful engine is just too thirsty and the lovable veggie Merc doesn't fare much better. Oh no, here we go. That's it. End of the road for the Merc. While the cars powered by bioethanol and veg oil conk out at around 12 kilometers, the hybrid and the electric car just keep going. But as we approach the 20k mark, the hybrid starts to play up. Just over 19 kilometers and oh dear, I think that's us done. In the end, it's an overwhelming victory. The little electric car did 48 kilometers on a single charge, and that's over double the distance of the hybrid. It might be slow, but it's steady. And in this trial, it's the winner. I'm going to go pick up the losers. Woohoo! It works, it works. Graham, it's on fire. Pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling and cut there.